Uh, it's still Sunday, and it's still Chav Chasir. Kayachir. Don't they call Yehi Mirushalayim in Israel? The Tzionim. Well, every once in a while, I'll, I'll meet a Yid, a very elderly Yid, that will be bothered by how come we don't at all acknowledge these Nisim. And it's hard to answer. So say Shvetz Enfin. Because they are Nisim, you know. We don't believe that they're not Nis miracles, you know. We don't believe that. I guess the best expression is, You know, light and darkness are functioning in an entanglement. There's a quote that's repeated in one of the G'deli, so one of our Abayim, I don't remember which. Maybe the Baal Shem Tif, Maybe another, I don't remember which, but it was going around Gimel Thomas' site. That the, the expression is the Mafur Mashiach comes, there's going to be again an Esoyan like Hara Carmel, and the fire is going to fall by Baal. There's, there's, there's an expression from one of Ara Bayim. The Mafur Mashiach is going to be a, an Esoyan like Hara Carmel, and the fire is going to fall by Baal. I heard that in this past celebration in Etisrol, the president or the prime minister spoke how the Rabbeim were wrong in opposing Tzioinus. So it, it forced Chabad to say what it really believes. I mean, Chabad is in the business of being Makar of Yidin and supporting Eretz Yisrael. We're not in the business of reminding everybody every day that Tzioinus is Hei But it was the, our hand was forced that Rabbeim had to make a public statement. That's what I heard. I, I'm, I'm such a terrible follower of the news, you have no idea. I'm mamish. And it doesn't bother me. My children sometimes give me the news. The Nekude is... My boys in Yeshiva asked me this question recently about a whole conversation about it. The Nekude is... The, the Jewish people are an eternal people. We're an eternal people. That's our definition. And nothing is eternal. Nothing is eternal. No political system is eternal. No form of government is eternal. No culture is eternal. No philosophy of life is eternal. Except for Tere. And when Jews attach themselves to another body to help themselves float and they climb onto that float and say, this is ours. Like the Rebbe would quote the Pesach, Yechol Am and Beis Yisrael, we're no different than anybody else. Our language has profanity. One of the things that Ben Yehuda did was he put dirty words into Hebrew, otherwise what kind of language it is. The Rambam discusses, the Rambam writes in Meir Nevuchim. The reason it's called Lashon HaKodesh is because there's no words that represent not only dirty words, but the things that the lower functions of a person are all used a metaphor. A metaphor, a mushal. In Hebrew, the word for Lashon Kodesh, the word for going to the bathroom, is to turn away. It's a Lashon Kedush. And you climb, you make a float with like all the nations, and it feels very safe, and it feels very strong here. Yeah? What happens when the rest of the nations don't like that float anymore? So you remain floating all by yourself. The reason the Jews are eternal is because they're attached to an eternal float. <laughs> it's a funny float, <laughs> right? Doesn't always seem that secure, but it's forever. And that float is the Tere. So the Rabbi had a position, and I, I think that Rebbe Rashab is the, the one who absolutely chopped it, chipped, chopped out this sheet. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a strong sheet. And at that time, Reb Chaim Brisker, who was the head of the Misnagdim in Russia, the Elamish in Russia, agreed 100%. And Ada Yemaza, I think officially at least, the Brisker go in this derech. That there cannot be anything that involves Jews that is not rooted directly in Teira and in Rabbonim. Directly in Torah and in Rabbanim, Gedele Yisrael. So, you know, to say that Eretz Yisrael is not a miracle, 
to say that the redeeming of the case Lamarovi and Yerushalayim is not a miracle. It's shtus. It's shtus. It's not only shtus. It's 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 worse than shtus. But like the Rebbe says, we have to make Medina Sisol and to edit Sisol and edit Sisol and to edit Hakodesh. That's that. That's a Yom Tif. We cannot make part of our eternal Torah something which is by definition transient. I told my students something which I, I think is pretty accurate. It's controversial and you have to be careful where you say it and how you say it. The reform movement was created for anti-Semitism. In the belief that the way to avoid anti-Semitism was to assimilate. And it ended in the Holocaust. The Zionist movement adopted the philosophy of nationalism, which is the exact opposite of the reform. Assembled means be like the German. Nationalism means be proud to be a Jew, be separate, be separate. Before Israel became a state, that idea wasn't popular anymore. In the 19th century, in the beginning part of this century, nationalism was very strong. Everybody wanted to be their own nation and carry their own flag. Because, you know, you had all these... In, in Europe, you had these big empires and so many countries were suppressed. Uh, Bosnia wanted to be Bosnia, not Austria-Hungary, you understand? They wanted to be their own people. So the Jews thought, okay, we'll make a nation, nationalism, nationalism, yeah. And what happens when the world decides that nationalism is a bad idea? So what happens to the Jewish state? So what float do we, what raft do we float on? The only thing that's eternal is the Tater. And it's very, it's, I'm not going to say it's easy. It's not easy. Anybody that lived in the last three centuries has good explanations for why it was hard for him to remain on the raft of Tater, especially if he wasn't close to Rabbi Seyna Nisayinu, to real tzaddikim who help people with koiches el yoinim, with koiches mil milo. But that's Pasha de Maise. That's Pasha de Maise. Before Israel was born, nationalism became a bad word. So now what is, what is it supposed to do? We have to create a new identity. It's only one identity. I didn't have to create it. You have to just admit it. The Rebbe has letters to Shazar, which are so amazing, so poignant. When the Rebbe came out against Mir Yehudi, when went public on Mir Yehudi, Shazar was attacked in... Shazar was the president of Israel. And Shazar was a Lubavitch Chosset. He, he was a modern man, but... And at the end of his life, he was actually from... But Shazar's respect for the Rebbe and love for the Rebbe, it wasn't social, it wasn't cultural, it was deep. I, I never met Shazar. Shazar passed away when I was nine years old, and I would never... He was a, he was a big macher. Shimon Lazarov meant to see him in the airport in Texas. He got a road to go see him. And he introduced himself as the Rebbe Shliach. The first words out of Shazar's mouth. Was macht der Rebbe? It tells you there was a, there was a real sense of his guy. He was a chassid. In his way, he was a chassid. And the second question is, you think I can come for you at Bistavos? <laughs> it was Gimel Tammuz. He, he wasn't in his schedule. He was supposed to fly straight back to Israel. You think I can sneak into your Bistavos? So yes, he came for Yibis Tammuz, and Shimon Lazar also came for Yibis Tammuz. Shimon Lazar was a younger man. How, cool did he call? How old could he have been? 30. And the Rebbe introduced him in his room again as one of his shluchim to Shazar. So Shazar wrote the Rebbe a letter, which means the Rebbe is not allowing me to be a Lubavitcher. He's making it impossible for me. I'm the president of Israel, and the Rebbe is fighting with the whole Israel. It's a whole letter. And he writes the letter to the Rebbe that he swore allegiance to the state of Israel. And he has to support the state. And the, the Rebbe is making it impossible for him. So the Rebbe writes back. You were a Chabadnik before I was born. <laughs> and you're going to be a Chabadnik for many long years to come. And then the Rebbe says... You swore allegiance to the state of Israel. And I think I was the one who encouraged you to do it, uh, parenthetically. He says, please tell me 
when you swore that oath that you didn't think about Avram Avinu? Tell me, ah, you thought about Ben Gurion and Herzl. You thought about Avram Avinu. You thought about Avram Avinu. You thought about Avram Avinu. That's the allegiance. That's who we are. And I, 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 we're not those people who say, throw away the baby with the bathwater. But we can't celebrate his Yom Tevim. We can't. Because it's it's a mixture of light and darkness. And it's not just a light and darkness of, of confusion of ideas. It's a light and darkness mamish of Kedu, of a of a of a movie of Tumma and Tahar and Mamish. A big confusion. So we, we were very much, you know, when the Rebbe spoke about Entebbe and the miracle, the Satman went out of their minds. The Rebbe spoke of the miracle, six day war they went out of their minds. But we, we, it's hard, we can't celebrate his Mayadim. It's a nest and it came from the Abishtid and there's no doubt about it. Okay, yeah, that was 12 minutes and 25 seconds. I, I just didn't want to pass the opportunity. I heard that this past Yom Atzmaut, somebody spoke about the Rebbe Rashab. That's what I heard. And that the Rabbanim had to respond, so I get right. Okay, let's do the Hayyam Yayim. Now, in the page that I gave you, there's apparently a printing mistake. Okay, let's read. Yayim Shlishi Lamed Menachem Page Pei Gimel. I, I just spent so much time on this, I don't know if I'm even going to get to it. Yayim Shlishi Lamed Menachem Ov Reish Chedesh Hei Tov Shin Gimel. Maschil and Leim Oldov the Shameiri. We begin to say Oldov the Shameiri. Haminig Bebeis Rabbeinu, the meaning in the Rabbeim's house is during the day of Lamid Menachem Ov, which is the first day of Reish Chedesh El, taken the Islami, they blow Shefer to practice. O Maschilim Letkeya Achar Atfil, you begin to blow Shefer after davening, Miyayim Beis the Reish Chedesh the next day, which is Aleph El. In other words, Chedesh El is always two days. Menachem Ov is 30 days, and therefore Chedesh El is always two days. So some things start Aleph the first day of Reish Chedesh, and some things are the second. For example, we have a custom that we say three extra kapitlach tilim. That's going to start the next day, the Aleph Elo. And the same is true. The minute to blow Shefer begins the next day on Aleph Elo. But the day before Lamed, the Rebbeim blow to practice. And we also say the Dava de Shameri. I believe that this is a. Uh, many communities have a custom to say the Dava de Shameri on Shmini Atzeres. We don't. We stop in I think those communities start the second day of Shkedesh. So it's 51 days. The has happened. 51 days. This hot azenish kasechel because the truth is we consider Shmini Atzeres the highlight of Tishrei. They consider Eshan Araba the highlight of Tishrei, and we stop saying above the Shamei and Eshan Araba, and they say the Shamei to the. It says, if we understood all the secrets, we would either be crazy or we would be great. But we start with the first day. Now, of course, you know the secrets and look at the secrets. <coughs> About this taking the Islamic, that the first day of the you blow Shafer to practice. Mamish, that's what you need. You have to have a day to blow to practice. What happens? First of all, most people can pick up a shave and a blow. You don't need practice. And second of all, the day before, yeah, I'm blowing shave Wednesday. Aleph Elo, I can get up before davening and pick up a shave and clean it up and poof. You have to practice the day before. Vasara Maise. So, of course, the Rebbe can leave no stone unturned and nothing is as it seems. And the Rebbe develops a very incredibly profound Indian. The Rebbe talks about the Shafer of Matsyim Kippur. It's one sound. The Shafer of Matsyim Kippur is one sound. The Shafer of Matsyim Kippur is not a mitzvah. Right? When it says in Chumish that you blow Shafer Yom Kippur, that's only Shasa Yevo. 
and we have no yevah b'chlal. Blowing shavi yom kippur is not a mitzvah; it's a minik. Right? It's a minik. I don't know what the source of it is. Not in the Gemara. To finish him kif with the sound of a shaven, who's the first one to write that idea? I, I, you know, I, before I talk, I should look. You know, I have a habit of saying things with supposition, then I go home and I say, yeah, right. It's not in the Gemara. I don't think it's, it's, it's later. How? It was not from the Rishonim. And we blow shaven him kif it even when it's Shabbos. And we blow Shevim Kippa even when it's Shabbos if it's a little early, you know. You're allowed. Whether you do it or you don't do it. Either it is or it isn't. You could get there early, you can get there later. If you count Napoleon's march, yeah. and so on. Now, so the Rebbe goes into this classic idea about Minik, you know, Minik Yisra. We have the Raisis, we have the Rabbonon, we have Minig Yisrael. Right, so the rule is that uh, uh, the Raisis is higher than the Rabbonon, and the Rabbonon is higher than the Minig, in Aloha. But in Chassid, it's all upside down. Or the Rabbonon is higher than the Raisis, as they state in the Gemara. Chamur in Olay Diver Seif, Meif Tim Tero. Chaviv in Olay Diver Seif, Meif Tim Tero. The favors our contributions to Tero more than his own. You know, the Gemara says, that when the Eibishter says something and the Chachamim argue, what is the Eibishter doing? He smiles and he laughs and he says, Natschuni, Boni Natschuni. This is a Gemara. Defeat me, my children, defeat me. And there's an explanation for it. There's an explanation for it even in England. But there's certainly an explanation for it in Chassidus. And in the Kudas Adova, the Pintele of it all, the shadosh of Yid is higher than the shadosh of Teda. And Yid didn't add to the Teda. Yid didn't add to the Teda in Yonim, which are not in the Teda, because they come from a Yiddish in Ishama, which is even higher than the Teda. Like the Indian of Mesidus Nefesh, which is represented by Chanak and Purim, are not in the Teda, because according to the Teda, they have no place. According to the Tatum, Messias Nefesh has parameters. The story of Purim, and especially the story of Hanukkah, was a Messias Nefesh that violated all the parameters of Allah as a Messias Nefesh that the Abisha gave us in the Tatum. And that's why the Gemara says that when they wanted to make it into a Yomtev, Kavun Yiladatis, by Purim and by Hanukkah, Kisun Yiladatis, they took a time. The next year, Lashon Acheres Kovum, why? The rabbis have to ask a question. You just violated the Shulchan Aruch and now you want to make it into a Yom Tif? But the Eibishter made a Ness. The Eibishter made a Ness. So we're here, but they were Mason Nefesh for Yiddishkeit. They were Mason Nefesh for Yiddishkeit. Not for Yidden, for Yiddishkeit. Hanukkah was a mysterious Nefesh. They didn't violate the Taylor to save Jews. They violated the Taylor to sanctify the name of God. Be very aware of that distinction. So Hanukkah became a Yomtev. Why did it have to happen a thousand years after Matan Tater? Couldn't happen right away. Because it's not part of the Torah God gave us. God gave us His wisdom. We add to that something which is higher than His wisdom. And that's how we understand Mini Gisol Tater. Mini Gisol Tater is a, is a, is a toysness. But the Rebbe brings it a lot. Mini Gisol Tater. If I'm not mistaken, it's a Yerushalmi and Tater brings it in Babylon. But I could be wrong. But the Rebbe brings the Shoinim Mini Gisol Tater. And the Rebbe brings from the Shalat Shuvah Sarajba examples of what it means, that the Noshim Skene is out of ruin and they had certain menhogim about how they raised little kids. This is Torah, this is God's wisdom, this is part of the Ein Seif. And it wasn't given to us at Har Sinai, it comes from us because a deeper and a higher Shadish. And the Rebbe explains that the key of Matzim Kippur is not a mitzvah, right? Rosh Hashanah Shefer, the way the Rebbe learns it in the Kutasichas, has three madregas. It's a mitzvah, and it's tshuva, and it's atzmus. But the Shefer of Motzi Yom Kippur is not a mitzvah. It's all chiyah to bow Shefer then. This Shefer comes from us. It's a cry from the deepest level of the Neshama, which makes it higher than the Tkiyah Shefer of Rosh Hashanah, even though blowing Shefer of Rosh Hashanah is a mitzvah, say, the Eraisa, and it makes David Shten to a king, and all those other things. So the Rebbe correlates the Bayeim Barishan taken the Islamid with Yom Kippur. 
You understand? He takes he's, the day before you blow shafer practice. What are we, we're not talking about rocket science. I mean, the, the Chazal say that blowing shafer is a, is a chachma melach. It's an umnis. You need a certain wisdom to blow shafer. Two things it says: how to blow shafer and how to make a kesher shel tefillin. And I do not know how to make kesher shel tefillin. Somebody once taught me, but I don't know how to make a kesher shel tefillin. But it's chachma melach. It, it requires a certain skill. But it's not so difficult to do to blow shaver. It's not such a big deal. So the token Islamic means we're blowing shaver, which is is a minic to a minic. You see, blowing shaver in El is also only a minic. Blowing shaver Rosh Hashanah is a mitzvah. Blowing shaver in El is a minic, and that's the reason why. You separate out of Rosh Hashanah, you do not blow Shafer. Because you want to separate between the Shafer, which is a minig, and the Shafer, which is a did. Take in some of this is a minig to a minig. If minig is so tidy, things that Jewish people add on their own have a higher shesh than the tidy, it comes from Yiddish and Neshama, this is the deepest of the deep. Before you blow Shafer and Elul, you practice. But in that practice, you have everything that's going to come later. It's like Maidani, you know, you're laying in bed and you have no awareness and you have no understanding and you have no feel and you have no mood and you have no interest and you say Maidani. And it says in the Ayyem Yeh that all the tum in the world cannot contaminate the Maidani of Ayyid. Call a tum in the Elam Kenish Metamazan the Maidani from Ayyid. Why? Because it doesn't come from a place of reason, it doesn't come from a place of understanding. It comes from a place to use the language of like Ba'imid, it comes from a place of Hoycha You know what Hoycha means? I admit that this is true and I don't even know why I'm admitting. I admit that this is true, I accept that this is true and I don't even know why I accept it. Why are you accepting? Because you're an idiot? No, because I'm a Jew. But why is that a reason? Because I know. I don't know how. But I know that's Maidani. And the Rebbe turns this token Islam into such an idea that before you start blowing Shafer in a formal way, you know, when, it, when a minute starts, it's very exciting, yeah. When a minute is established, it becomes almost like everything else. <laughs> uh, you become used to it and you stop appreciating how unique it is and how special it is, yeah. This is the minute to the minute, you know. This is, I don't have, I, today there's no custom to blow shape, but I'm gonna blow anyway, I'm gonna practice. That blow is, what is it? It's like the little kids, Rosh Hashanah in the afternoon, you finally sit down, you eat your su'udah, and the kids are blowing shape all over the dining room, yeah, it gets on your nerves, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the take in the Islam, that, that touches a very deep place, a very special place, a very essence place. And that's how the Rebbe explains this take in the Islam. Okay, let's continue now. I'll start from the beginning and I'll move, yeah? Yem Shlishi, Lamed Menachemov, the Shchede, Shetov Shengibu Maschil, Nikolov the Shamedi, Haminik with Beis Rabbeinu, Shem Meshach Hayim, taking the Islamid. That you blow Shefer on this day to practice. And the way, based on what the Rebbe says in the Sikhe, you blow just one Tkia. You don't do Shefer. Just like, because it's comparable to the one Tkia of Matsyim Kippur, there's only one sound. U Maschil, the Tkia Acharat Fili, you begin to blow after Davening, Miyem Beis Rishchede, the next day, the second day, the Shchede. Shiyurim, Chumme, Shaftem, Shlishim, Pedestashi, Tilim, Kuf, Mehetel, Kuf, Nun, Tanya, Yud, Achaz, Risha, Shalom, Vachayim, Nishmasam, Vachulim. Admur Azokin. Hoya Oime, Betchil, Mamorim, Akhtarim. The Alter Rebbe used to say originally short my modem. Ulu Dugma, for example. Dibar Amaschel, Zecher, Avtuvcho, Beyurish, Besidur. The Maimer, Zecher, Avtuvcho, which is printed in the Alter Rebbe's Sidur. Nemru, Beshishem, Sheikhim, was said in six intervals. Barichas Yesa Kitzas Me Anitva is a little longer than what's printed. Now it says in your text Admur Azokin. But apparently it's a typo. <laughs> it's a typographical error. It's supposed to say Admur Amtsoi. I copied this from an older print of Ayem Yem that I have. But I over here uh, know a later edition, a newer edition. And here it says Admur Amtsoi. This is I. <laughs> that means. For 50 years, there was a mistake in the Ayem Yeh. 
So I'm like spun out. I don't know what to do, you know. So I'm like, lending them guys and this lending them guys. I, I, I really would like to go home and look up the sources. The Rebbe has notes on the Hayyem Yem, where he wrote his sources. And for this Hayyem Yem, he wrote uh, a particular source. They're writing here that in that source, what the Rebbe said isn't. It's just not there. They found it someplace else. This is called the Hayyem Yem Hamavur. You know, sometimes the Rebbe left mistakes on purpose for us to find. You know, he used to say that. We, we say two, remember the two, Raymamus? Don't remember we start saying second Raymamus, Tafshin Namchas? Everybody knew it was a mistake. Everybody who knew. The Alta Yid and Gavust. And they said, no, don't fix it. For 50 years, he allowed us to say one Raymamu, and then he fixed us. The Rebbe sometimes said, I make mistakes. I want to see if people are paying attention. It may have been a typographical error, but post case, the Rebbe could have fixed it. He left it. I, I, it's very, it's, it's, it's really disturbing to me. I'll tell you how to make peace out of this a little bit. There's a sefer which we call the Alter Rebbe Siddur. Siddur im Dach, Alter Rebbe Siddur. The Alter Rebbe Siddur is a book that is sometimes attributed to the Alter Rebbe and sometimes attributed to the Mittler Rebbe. Because the Mittler Rebbe wrote it. The Mittler Rebbe wrote the Alter Rebbe Siddur. I mean, Bechlal, the Alter Rebbe did not write us on my mother. The Alter Rebbe did not write us on my mother. He wrote the Tanya, and the Shulchan Aruch, and the Chuvas. But the Alter Rebbe did not the Rebbe did not write his Maimorim, with rare exception. And it's a miracle he didn't, by the way, because the Maimorim that the Alter Rebbe did write are pure Kabbalah, they're Mamish Kabbalah. <laughs> you don't understand the word. They printed a few in Tayyar Eir just for fun. <laughs> Try and figure it out. It's impossible to read, impossible. The Mitla Rebbe was one of the Alter Rebbe's Manich, Mitla brought out Maimorim. And the Mittler Rebbe had a Rishay, Mittler Rebbe had permission that none of the other Manichim had, that none of the other transcribers were Mittler Rebbe had. This is a whole piece of Chabad history which is interesting and even painful and also very revealing. The Mittler Rebbe had a friend who was older than him, who was a God of In the base Rebbe, he doesn't call him a Chosid. He calls him a Talmud, you know, the Bashan Tevet got Talmidim. Because the Jemagadi got Talmidim, the Rebbe got Chassidim. A Talmud becomes a Rebbe, a Chosid becomes an old Chosid. By, by Rabbi Adol Hagadol, he writes a Talmud. He was very close to the Mittler Rebbe. They, at one point, they were incredibly close. Then there was a Machlaikis between them. The Alter Rebbe would say about the departure of Rabbi Adol they ripped an eye out of my head. The Alter Rebbe was beside himself and Rabbanus Trashala left. Rabbanus Trashala was a he was a, he was a, he was a gone, a gone. He knew the whole title. He was a gone, and a, but you see, what made a chaser a chaser was not how many pages of Gemara he knew and how many sodim he wrote. How he served God. He had begun in the maybe And it was business in his nefesh. I mean, you're talking about great men, great people. Till Mitzah Nefesh. They, they, they didn't keep anything back. Till the guts went out. He was a serious, he was a serious, he was a real chassid, you know. He came to the Alter Rebbe, not for a bracha for Banasa, for children, or to win the lottery. He came for a derech and avoida. And the Alter Rebbe made him into who he was. Not by being nice to him, you understand. By making the mold, by pushing him and pushing him and pushing him and pushing him, him a chosid. It was a oivid. And obviously, he was a big fish who swam in the deep waters of Chassidus Chabad. He was one of the Alter Rebbe's biggest macabre. And he wrote Svarim that are now published. You should know for many years there was a big controversy about his Svarim. 
There was a Yid here in New York, his name was Reinen, Sender Reinen. He was very, very close to the Beis Araf, to the Rebbe Rashab, to the Friedrich Rebbe. And he once saw the Rebbe sitting from Friedrich and Rebbe, I guess in Atvatsk, or in Riga still. And the Rebbe was learning Rabbanan Strashel Zasefer. So Sender Reinen went over to our Rebbe and said, you're learning Strashel? <laughs> he's the bad Chosid, you know, he's the bad Chabad. And the Rebbe's response to him was, he didn't respond to the politics, to the political aspect at all. It's an incredibly deep safe. But there were years the people didn't learn this for him. The Rebbe said apparently, but one of the students upstairs, the Rebbe said he's ready to print Strachelah's Siddhis on the Chabad, on the Ross, on the Americas. There are people who print this for him. Some of them printed of Telochus, you know. <laughs> Because they don't like us, so they automatically like him. You have such people, Baruch Hashem. You can buy his for him. And there's Chus. Um, I'm waiting for someone to pick up on the Mogin Ovis and to print the Mogin Ovis his for him for the same reason. But he was a giant. A serious giant. Not just a big Lama Tchach, but a Eved. He wrote the Altarev as my modern. But he wrote them how he understood them. And I'm sure he understood very well. If he would have been here, he would have sidelined even the Biel. The Biel was no child, but he wasn't out of the trash there. But the Altarebbe didn't tolerate that. Altarebbe wanted my modern written verbatim. Altarebbe was the first generation. He had to write what he said word for word. And as I tell you all the time, The Al Rebbe spoke in Yiddish. So the transcribers used to write Hebrew and Yiddish. Norvaden is Yiddish. El Arak. There's no such Hebrew. It's not Hebrew, right? Is nish verstandig. Ain't a mover. Nobody writes ain't a mover. <laughs> we don't understand. You ask a question. The Hebrew of my mother Chassidus are the worst grammar ever invented. Because they're not Hebrew grammar, they're Yiddish grammar. Because they literally transcribe, in other words, they didn't even take out the double negative that Yiddish is famous for. Narva den, Elorak. It's Ela. They left in all the, in other words, it's, it was, they were so loyal to the Alter Rebbe's words, they pushed it, wrote word for word what he wrote, that they wrote it in Hebrew instead of in Yiddish. Rabbi Arnashel didn't do that. He wrote as he understood, and he understood well. And Alter Rebbe was very makpid. And Alter Rebbe, I told him, he's not allowed to write at all. He told him, no hanuchas, don't write hanuchas. Other people were hanuchas. Alter Rebbe had five manichim, and one of them was not Rabbi Arnalevi. And he didn't listen. And twice Al Rebbe constant him. Twice. Each time the class was that he can't come two years till the Yadi. For a yid like that to not be with Al Rebbe for two years was you not being the Rebbe for two generations. It was impossible. After the second knas, he left and he didn't come back to the Alter Rebbe yet. And when the Alter Rebbe was in Stalag, he opened up his own shop in Strashale. And he survived the Mittler Rebbe by about 10 months. Mittler Rebbe passed away in Kislev. Tov Kuf Pei Ches he passed away in Tishrei Tov Kuf Pei Tes and he slept a lot of Chassidim a lot of the Alter Rebbe's greatest Chassidim went to the Strachele after the Stalkas of the Alter Rebbe because he had an unbelievable Koyach and in many ways he was more similar to the Alter Rebbe than was the Mittler Rebbe than the Mittler Rebbe was Rav Anu Strachele had a Taina a good Taina the Mittler Rebbe did with the Alter Rebbe's my modem whatever he wanted and the Alter Rebbe never said boo Never said a word. The middle Rebbe used to write his mother of his father. His father wrote a page, he wrote five pages. Not after he became a Rebbe, when the Alter Rebbe was alive. When he would say chsidis, the middle Rebbe would say chsidis. Chsidim would say chsidis. He would repeat the Alter Rebbe's mind, but he didn't say it what the Alter Rebbe said, the way he said it his way. And the Alter Rebbe basked in the glory of the middle Rebbe. We never had in the entire history of Chabad or more 
shameless example of father pride for a son than the altar of the Mitla Rebbe. It's amazing. Alter Rebbe was unabashed and unconstrained about how he revealed his pride in the Mitla Rebbe. It's almost like he wasn't afraid of Ayanora. Alter Rebbe used to tell Chassidim when they asked him questions in Avoida, go to my Rebbe. And when Alter Rebbe said, go to my Rebbe, he meant his son. You understand? Alter Rebbe used to tell Chassidim in the later years of his life, Go to my Rebbe, go to my Rebbe, and my Rebbe, he meant his son, the middle Rebbe. You imagine what that means? And Rabbi Nisheshul couldn't understand. I'm older than him. Rabbi Nisheshul was no Mapul Kint, he was not a Das, he wasn't a nobody. Why him? Yeah, me not. It looked like favoritism, it looked like it wasn't fair. <laughs> You know the story? You know the story? A man came to the Rebbe Rashab and he asked him for a Hatzah, for a Shidduch, for his daughter. A Chassid. Came to the Rebbe Rashab and said, I have a daughter, a Kale, I need a Chassid, a Bokhir. And the Rebbe is the first look in a Chassid. The Rebbe should propose a Chassid. So the Rebbe Rashab proposed one of the Tmimim. The Tmimim, the Temchet Tmimim. The Rebbe Rashab said about Temchet Tmimim, it pushed back the clock 50 years, maybe 100 years. The Tmimim were G'daylim. But they were not living in this world. They were not tall, dark, and handsome. You understand? They were, they were young men who were 40 years past their age in terms of their understanding of Torah and Ikiris Ner Avoidah. But they were not an attraction to a young girl from a Balabatish and Mishpacha. This was a Labavitcher, mind you, a Labavitcher. And he asked, nobody asked him to ask. He came to the Rebbe Rashab and he asked the Rebbe Rashab for a suggestion for a Shidduch. And the Rebbe shot him, Fergus Log, any from the tweet, and take a Bacha, this and this boy. He knew who the boy was, and the guy was a slob, he didn't know it was flying. And you know, over my dead body, my daughter's not marrying that guy, you know. But he asked the Rebbe, and the Rebbe was Matziah the Shidduch. What's he getting to? He says to the Rebbe, after had the Rebbe Matziah. Maybe the Rebbe has a bias, meaning he's one of your boys. Someone's got to marry him, so my daughter will be the guinea pig. The Rebbe Rashab was so hurt. He was so hurt by that comment. And the Rebbe said, Eib du tracht. Eib du tracht. As he ich hob noch shayach's matthias. Is was comes to a head. If you think that I am still liable to bias, why do you even come here? If you think that I still have subjectivity, I still have favorites, you shouldn't be near me. Eib du tracht. As ich hob shayach's matthias. Was comes to a head. So the, so the Aaron Strachella felt that the Altareb is favoring his son. Now, there's, there's many protein which I'm not going to tell you. But the answer was that Aaron Strachella was Aaron Strachella. He wasn't the Mitla Rebbe. He wasn't the Mitla Rebbe, with all due respect. The Mitla Rebbe's words were Divine Elikim Chaim. And Aaron Strachella's words were a Pirush on Divine Elikim Chaim. And the Altareb didn't want his words interpreted. The Altareb wanted his words delivered. Dvarim Kavayoson Divide Lakim Chaim, like the Friedrich Karebe. You know that the Mitlar of the Samach Sadik argued about this. I'm not a big maven in the Chsirus of the Samach Sadik. The Mitlar Rebbe I learned. The Svarim, Hanid Fasim, I learned. I didn't learn the later Svarim, but the Svarim that he printed, Bechayev, a truth is I didn't learn the Siddhir. I didn't learn the Pirish. I didn't learn the big ones, the Pirish Amiyas. I didn't learn the Nebina, but I learned many of the Svarim. Samach Sadik, I learned almost nothing of the Eira Teira. But I have found cases where the Tzemach Tzedek and the Mitle Rebbe are both writing notes on the Maimah of the Alter Rebbe and they say exactly the same thing. Because the Mitle Rebbe tells it to you in three pages, the Tzemach Tzedek tells it to you in ten lines. The Mitle Rebbe writes the whole thing out in longhand. The Tzemach Tzedek writes a note because the Tzemach Tzedek disagreed with his father-in-law. 
So Machzadik felt that the Mittal Rebbe's elaboration makes you lose the original wording of the Alter Rebbe. The Alter Rebbe, so Machzadik wrote his Maimonim as notes. So you should know what's the Alter Rebbe's and what's his. The Mittal Rebbe just wrote a long run on. It's hard to know what's the Alter Rebbe's and what the Mittal Rebbe's. So the Rav Nisrashele felt that he's doing the same thing as the Mittal Rebbe. So, so the expression is, Friedrich Rebbe writes, that the middle Rebbe has Gvald Gariches. The middle Rebbe takes the modern and father and elaborates very, very much. Obermen can sail in ACS Haravi pedal. If you pay attention, you can count the original words of the Alta Rebbe like pearls. In other words, he doesn't touch the Alta Rebbe's original language, he just builds around it. He was, in other words, the Friedrich Rebbe says that the middle Rebbe, even though he writes such long speeches around the Alta Rebbe's my modern, he was loyal to the Alter Rebbe. He didn't change his words. Probably the most concentrated place where this emerges when it comes to what's called the Alter Rebbe Siddur. Is the Alter Rebbe Siddur the Alter Rebbe? Is the Alter Rebbe Siddur the Middle Rebbe? It's sometimes counted amongst the Alter Rebbe's for him and sometimes counted amongst the Middle Rebbe's for him. I, I, if I'm not mistaken, the Sharblatl is the Middle Rebbe, it's not the Alter Rebbe. It's considered a member of the Alter Rebbe, but the margin is the Middle Rebbe. Because he wrote to my mother. And upon him, he wrote to my mother twice. In other words, when the Alter Rebbe said to my mother, he wrote them. When the Alter Rebbe said to my mother, he wrote them, he wrote them in his signet, he wrote them in his language, which is very, very elaborate. When the middle the Rebbe printed the Siddur, he rewrote them for print, and apparently, he made them shorter. You understand? The middle of that was, was Tafresh Ein Ches, was the early years of his Nasiyas. He, he was Mitzamtim himself. In other words, when the Altarebbe was Rebbe, Altarebbe said a Maimim. So the Tzemach said he wrote a Hanoch. The Maril was still alive. Maril wrote a Hanoch. The Pichas Rezus wrote a Hanoch. And the middle of that wrote a Hanoch. Those three Hanochas are different. But you can see that they're related. They're cousins, they're half brothers. You can see that they're related. The middle of that is five times as long. If you look through the printed my mother, and you could see the same Maim in Nusach Aleph, Nusach Beis. One is two pages, and one is twelve pages. One is the Tzemach Tzadik, the Middle Rebbe. Same Maim. Because the Middle Rebbe used to write the Maim and the as the Rebbe said, the way he understood it. When he printed the Siddur, if I remember correctly, it says in Akdama, if I'm not mistaken, he rewrote the Maim that he had written of his father's in a more consolidated way. It should be more Peter Shamil, it should be more of Daf, you understand? So it's, it's, it's my Maimonim of the Alter Rebbe, in the signet of the Mittal Rebbe, which the Mittal Rebbe then prepared for print. So, so now that's why you can give some credibility to this mistake. It's the Maimonim of the Alter Rebbe that the Mittal Rebbe is saying. The word is Admur HaZok, Admur HaIm Tsoi. Hoi Oyim Betchil Maimonim Tsoi. The Mittal Rebbe said, short of Maimonim. For example, the Zechar of Tufcho Urusha Besidur. Nan Rab Shikham Shekh, and look at the next words. Ba'arichos Yasek Tasmi Anitfas. Longer than the way it's printed. That's how he wrote it originally. He wrote it longer than he printed it. So when he said the Maimed Tuf Siddim, he didn't say the Maimed as he printed it in the Siddur. He said the Maimed as he wrote it. And he wrote it originally longer than he put it into the Siddur. He consolidated it. So you understand? So he wrote a Maimir. Then when he printed the Sefer, he rewrote it shorter. When he has it, that Maimir, he said it as he wrote it, not as he printed it in the Residim. The vault of the Maimir is that when the middle Rebbe first became Rebbe, forgive me for using this word, Aminas Hasidus was still normal. We'll continue this next Sunday. I'll continue this next time.